Boomer Zoomers, Boomer Zoomers, Boomer Zoomers, Boomer Zoomers. Connecting through Zoom is the way to go. So let's dive right in. It's Boomer Zoomers. And there they are. There they are. They're back again. They do not go away. The Boomer Zoomers from the Charlestown Senior Center. Bill Isabella, who is with you today? To my immediate left is the wonderful Bill Cumbie. And to his immediate left is, well, Ken McCoy. You know, we'll leave it at right. that. I'll remind friend. you to move in closer to the mic when it's your turn to speak. So Bill yeah. Isabella, Bill Cumbie, Ken McCourt. Bill, I know the first subject you want to bring up is the Supreme Court. Uh, generally, they made a lot of um, well, what many call controversial, I think, were good rulings uh, this year. But and I know this is an issue you discussed with your your current yes, events group uh, recently. Tell us uh, what your thought concerns are here. Well, our concern is actually multi-focused, but primarily what our expectation, what should our expectations be about the Supreme Court? Do we think a liberal court is the way to go, a conservative court? I personally, and I think we would concur, that the court should be non-biased. It should be concerned about the constitutionality of a writing and a decision as opposed to liberal or conservative. So I think that's the approach we have. But most American people think that they win and lose when a, 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 a decision is made on their behalf. Very, very bad. Does not, does not bode well. Bill, uh, what, what do you feel about that? And what did your group uh, feel about it? Well, I think personally, um, on the side of the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court should only be involved in those things that are constitutional in, in respect to whether or not particular things meet constitutional um, constitutionality. The, the issue is, though, is that the people are the ones that need to make decisions, and that needs to come back locally. The Supreme Court is not our babysitter. They don't need to tell us what to do. They need to bring this back home so the people in the surrounding communities can make decisions on things. Unfortunately, in this day and age, I think many, many more people want to be coddled. They want to be told what to do. They want to have the rules spell out in front of them to the point of pushing other people onto those rules, whether or not they make sense or not. Unfortunately, that's what's happened. All right, let me throw it to Ken. By, by, let me add a little commentary that have Ken, you comment on my current commentary and add yours. And I think what, Bill, what you said, let me, let me try to restate that in a different way. The Constitution is not defined what a, a, a majority of the people believe or even what five judges believe. The Constitution is de defined by the written words on the four corners of the piece of paper that it's on. That's what the Constitution is. Now, of course, there, there's plenty of room for interpretation on that. But just because people people want to be validated, they want their ideas to be validated and, and to have the Constitution adjust to their ideas. That's not how it works. Ken McCourt, what do you say about all that? I say that we are a constitutional republic. And of all the forms of government on the surface of this earth, we have lasted the longest. So in my personal opinion, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I feel in regard to the Supreme Court that rather than worry about whether they're conservatives, Republicans, liberals, Democrats, we need to have people that are what I call constitutionalists, people exactly. that firmly believe in right. the Constitution. Exactly. A constitutionalist is what a judge should be, not a liberal or a conservative. Bill, one more comment from your team on this. Let, let, let's talk about the Supreme Court decision about affirmative action in college uh, admissions. Now, I had a long discussion with a friend of mine. He's a liberal uh, civil rights activist, Ray Rickman. And his whole argument, as well as most of the arguments I saw in the media, both on the conservative side and the negative side, were about whether or not affirmative action was justified, whether it was fair, whether it was a form of reparations, or whether it had run its course and is no longer useful. Neither of those questions are matter. The only question right. that should matter is, is making decisions based on the basis of race constitutional or not? Not whether or not they're fair or justified. Bill, what do you think? In addition, Mike, 
the decision is a very narrow decision. I think that gets lost in the translation somehow. Right. That decision only related itself to college admissions. It does not prevent uh, any kind of affirmative action to take place in any of the workplace, government jobs, whatever. So I think we need to take a step back and read the decision as opposed to taking a knee-jerk reaction to what some talking head said. And basically, right, that, it's a narrow decision only. That's a great point. But Bill Cumbie, let me ask you this. Should it be a broader? I mean, should the next decision be a broader decision? Should affirmative be allowed in any walk of American life based on the basis of race? I think the way technology is today, everyone's going to get called out if you're going to be doing something that, that really is not within a person's um, right. So why do we need to have laws that dictate us when we have each other to be able to voice our opinions? What ends up happening is that we keep dividing ourselves. We keep chipping away at each other and that we don't need to do that. We need to all come together. And the only way to do that is to get rid of all this stuff. And I think if you talk to anybody that's of a different race or religion, they're all tired of the nonsense. Many yep. of them are. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, and it is divisive when you favor one class of people over another group of people. Ken McCourt, let, the final thought, let me pose it to you this way. You know, America is established, you know, it's capitalistic free market system is, a, is set up to be a meritocracy. Not, 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 no, no token, right? No, no automatic government tokens. Martin Luther King himself said, judge us by the content of our character, not, not the color of our skin. Doesn't affirmative action violate the U.S. principles of meritocracy and Martin Luther King's own philosophies? Well, I feel that they need to go a step further. I'm just talking about the college admissions. There's something which also needs to be addressed. It's called the legacy system, where if you had a relative, a father, a mother, uncle or aunt that yeah. went to a college, you yeah. got fast tracked into admission there. I think that needs to be addressed. I disagree. I'm going to disagree with you. It's unfair. It's not right. It should be subject to criticism but it's not unconstitutional. There's nothing in the constitution that says you can't base something based on the fact whether they're a donor or a graduate or alumnus of the school. See, that, that's what I'm saying. You can argue that something's fair or just or not, but that doesn't matter. Is it constitutional or not? There is nothing unconstitutional in my view about legacy admissions. All right, let's go on. One, final word, in the White one, House. one final word, one final quick word on that. I think back in the early 60s when the civil rights movement was hot and heavy, I think it made sense to have affirmative action. But now it's been going on for how many years? 64 to now? What are we doing here? This is crazy. Well, I again, it might have made sense, but it wasn't any more constitutional then as it is today. That would be oh, my argument. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah. Again, it's not about what makes sense. It's about right. what's constitutional. All right. Cocaine in the White House. Is this something you guys discussed with your group? Yes, we have. And we, we wonder why nobody can find out what's going on. They were able to pick up DNA from a piece of pizza thrown in the trash for the Julio murderer, which was days old, but they can't pick up any DNA or a latent fingerprint or a palm print from a bag of cocaine. And my understanding now that the evidence, because it's, they couldn't find it, that the evidence has been destroyed. I haven't been able to confirm that. But that's what I understand. This is absurd. How dumb do they actually think we are? Do they think we're going to swallow this? This is absolutely insulting. It's more than absurd. It's absolutely insulting. Bill Cumby, are you swallowing it? <laughs> it's hard to choke down. I think one of the problems with all this is that everybody is just saying, oh, well, you know, it's the way it is. And it's but it's not. You know, we. What has happened to our society where we've just pretty much just let it all go? I mean, we never got to the point where we have, are forcing our own people in office to stand up. Are we sold out to like corporations and to the government? And to, who who's running the country? That's what I want to know. I mean, some some underlying current is running this because the FBI and the Secret Service they definitely are being hogtied to not do anything. No, no so who, who is running? Who's running the country? Great question. Is Ken, Ken, do you think the Secret Service and the White House did enough uh, due diligence and investigation on this matter? 
I think they're all on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> the drug of the drug of power, right? The drug of power that they're, they're all on. You yeah. know what? That you know what, Ken? That could be the best comment we've had in all in all of our episodes here of, of in the dugout. Um, Bill, let, let me ask you guys this institution tr once trusted institution after once trusted institution is now no longer trusted by yeah. the american people you know we, we always we always understood that hollywood and government officials and and whatnot and maybe even colleges but but when it when the justice the department like you know started becoming corrupt and 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 compromised when our military same thing when they when they're focused now more on climate change and wokeness than they are in military preparedness and now i mean i think everybody said well the one group that could never be corrupted is the secret service these are the best and the brightest it certainly seems as if they've been politically compromised here as well bill isabella yeah i would i happen to agree with you mike as a matter of fact I, I'm, I'm not sure where all this is going to culminate but quite frankly, I think they're stirring the pot to a point where it's overboiling. And at some point, they, they may be terrible and dire consequences as a result of this. This is in your face. We know it's in, we, it's in our face. We know it's in everybody else's face. And our government is just walking away from it. And our politicians, God almighty, I hear some of them paying homage to a president that is obviously in the tank. This guy is just unbelievable. He, he says, he's on video saying, I've never spoken to my son about a business deal. Yes, we have photographs of him sitting in a room with, with the same folks. He never spoke to them about that? Do you, do you really expect us to buy this? And if so, if so how, how little do they think of us if they expect us to buy into that? Yep. This, is, yep. this is a scene. You're, you're exactly right. Bill Cumby, is there any traditional institution in this country that you think the people have great faith in anymore? Every three-letter agency is compromised. How they're compromised, compromised and by whom, I don't know. But I think we, the individuals in our local communities, need to lock arms and push back because we have to get we have to get to a compromise within ourselves to be able to say, you need to be accountable. You can't get away with what you've been getting away with for all this time. And I guess we've been lackadaisical of that and not locking arms to do it. And that's well, what we I, should, I should point out that uh, CEG, I mean, you know, the current events group is a three is a three uh, three term <laughs> agency. So I don't know. Can we have trust in you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Ken McCourt, what? <laughs> Ken McCourt, what? What can we do to restore institutional integrity in our nation? That's a good question. I am all. <laughs> I'm a retired. I'm gonna get everybody off drugs. How's that? <laughs> I'm a retired teacher, and one time in one of my classrooms, I caught a student lying about where his homework was. So I addressed the student. I said, you know what happens when you lie to me? He said, what, what, what? I said, you break a trust. Right. And it takes an awful lot to come back from that broken trust. And I don't know what can be done because so many lies have been given that I perceive, let alone my friends and stuff, that it would take an awful lot to come back from that broken trust to the point now where I can't read a newspaper, listen to a radio or a television report and think any of it is true anymore. It's like fantasy land here. Yeah, you're I'm exactly waiting. right. They're ready yeah. to come out, they play, they play, you know? And, and you're right, the media is one of those institutions we can no longer trust either but we can trust the judgment of the boomers zoomers there at the Charlestown yes, senior yes, center yes, we absolutely can have faith in your opinions and uh, we thank you again for joining us and bill we should know we're going to give your group i know it's been tough work coming on our show we're going to give you the month of august off because we're taking the month of august off um i'm on vacation and everybody else is doing things they should be doing here in rhode island or outside of it so uh, we can, we'll have you guys back in September, right? No problem with that, agreed?
Sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. Matter of fact, we look forward to taking a little bit of time. Thank you, Mike. No, we no, like I expect, no, 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 I expect, no, I expect when we come back, you're going to bring on some of the, the, the better looking, fairer sex. I'm getting, you know, I'm, you know <laughs> we've had a lot of ugly guys on the show lately. I, I need yeah, to see. Yeah, looking, looking at the three of us, that's a very low bar you set there, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> all right, Boomer Zoomers, right. seniors at the Charlestown Senior Center, Martha and all the friends back there. Have a great meeting. Have a great rest of the summer. We'll see you all in September. Looking forward to it. Enjoy. That's a song, isn't it? To see you in September. <laughs> it must be an oldie because I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys. Hey, see you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. <laughs>